In January of 2006, Ricky McGee from Queensland received an employment opportunity in a government department in Port Hedland, Western Australia. This was an offer he couldn't refuse, but there was only one issue. Port Hedland is a 42 hour drive away from Queensland, which involved driving through the outback. This wasn't a problem for Ricky. He packed his bags and set off in his Mitsubishi Challenger, but Ricky never arrived at Port Hedland. Instead, the following 71 days would be the beginning of an extraordinary chapter that unfolded as Ricky got stranded in the outback with no idea where he was, no food, water or shelter. So what happened to Ricky McGee and did he survive? This is Wrong Turn, stranded in the Australian outback. Despite his story being heard all over the news, not much is known about Ricky himself. We do know he was born in Gippsland, Victoria in the early 1970s, but his family moved to Melbourne when he was young. His childhood was described as happy, but shortly after moving to Melbourne, his father sadly killed himself, which obviously had a massive effect on Ricky. Throughout his life, he worked various jobs, but could never gain anything permanent. These jobs included selling carpets, working as a prawn fisherman, serving as a nightclub storesman, and practicing as an electrician. His professional journey eventually led him to become a bailiff, but after getting into a fight in Perth, he was arrested, causing him to lose his job. He then went on to be arrested for drug offences, which made it hard for Ricky to land employment. In 2006, at the age of 35, Ricky was unemployed, but had been offered work in a government department in Port Hedland, Western Australia. He agreed to the job, and in January of 2006, he embarked on a journey which would take him across the Buntine Highway, a desert route in the outback. This is where his infamous story begins. Now it's worth mentioning that due to discrepancies in Ricky's accounts, some understandable doubts surround his story. The circumstances surrounding Ricky McGee being stranded in the outback are somewhat unclear as he has changed his story countless of times throughout the years. Initially, Ricky informed his rescuers that his car had broken down. He then said he left his car to search for help, but ended up delirious and lost. However, he quickly changed this story. He went on to say that he had given a ride to an Aboriginal hitchhiker while traveling between the towns of Kalkaringi and Halls Creek. He claimed that at some point on the journey, he asked the hitchhiker to get him a drink out of his fridge, and he believes that the hitchhiker drugged him and left him for dead, stranded in the middle of the desert. Again, this story was changed to the one that he sticks with today. I will say, to me personally, this one sounds the most unrealistic, but here it is anyway. In his autobiography, published in 2010, Ricky said he encountered three individuals by the roadside who had run out of fuel. Offering assistance, Ricky agreed to give one of them a lift to a nearby petrol station. However, during a struggle, he believed he was drugged, which caused him to lose consciousness. When he regained awareness hours later, he found himself in the captor's camp being held hostage. After an undisclosed period, the assailants left and he woke up in a hole covered with black plastic. He was then alone and stranded in the outback. The outback is a vast and captivating region in the heart of Australia. It's characterized by its expansive red deserts, rugged mountain ranges, ancient rock formations, and intimidating wildlife that has somehow found a way to adapt. Weather conditions are extreme and harsh, from scorching heat to relentless droughts and freezing nights. The outback, whilst captivating, presents inherent dangers, and its unforgiving nature can pose significant risks to those who venture into its vast expanse. People go missing in the outback every year, and many of them are never, and will never, be found. Regardless of how we got there, Ricky was now naked in the hot desert with nobody around, no food, water, or civilization. At first, Ricky sat in confusion. What had just happened to him? Was any of it even real? Sadly, it was, which meant he only had one option. This was to find help. Ricky embarked on a challenging journey through the desert, devoid of clothing and footwear. With each passing day, hope dwindled as he still found no hope of rescue. During the day, he baked in the hot sun which would often reach 40 celsius or 104 fahrenheit and at night he froze he knew that he had to find a water source and shelter if he was going to survive in perhaps the only stroke of luck ricky had on his harrowing journey thus far 
It had just been the end of rainy season, which meant scattered pockets of water remained in the desert. After a few days walking in the desert, Ricky found a small dam, which he made a makeshift shelter next to, and decided to rest. He now had shelter and water, but Ricky was starving and needed food. After a week with no food, Ricky was ready to eat anything he could find. As he lay in his makeshift camp, he saw a lizard run by. Without even thinking, he quickly killed the lizard and lay it out in the sun to cook. At this point, he couldn't be picky with what he ate, and he certainly wasn't. He ate anything from lizards, frogs and leeches, to wild plants, which, in his own words, if it tasted good, he ate it. Ricky, after a few weeks in his initial shelter, made the decision to move on. He eventually found another water hole and set up camp. He was now very weak and starving to death. He knew that he wouldn't be able to go any further, so he sat and waited. He even created a cross for himself, which he mounted on his shelter. Eventually on day 71, Ricky was found by Jackaroos located at the Birundudu Castle Station. Jackaroos is a term commonly used in Australia to refer to young male workers who assist with various tasks on a cattle station or sheep station. They are essentially farmhands or ranch hands who perform manual labour and help with day-to-day -day operations of the station. Mark Clifford, manager of the cattle station said, it's a bit unclear what the trouble was with the car and why he ended up off the road. He's walked for about 10 days to get to where he is before he's realised that he's got to set himself up some shelter and start trying to get some food into himself. He basically sat where he was for about 10 weeks. Where he was found was described by the Jackaroos as being one of the most remote places in the outback. Ricky was described as being a walking skeleton when he was found and he was severely malnourished and sunburned. He was flown to hospital where it was revealed that he had lost over half of his body weight which was initially 230 pounds and had dropped to 105 pounds. Despite this, because Ricky kept himself well hydrated throughout the ordeal, he was in surprisingly good shape, all things considering, and didn't require any serious medical attention. He discharged himself from the hospital six days later. Following Ricky's ordeal, the Australian media raised doubts about certain aspects of his account and reported his attempts to sell his story to commercial television stations. Additionally, the police also expressed scepticism due to Ricky's prior drug convictions. It was confirmed that he had survived in the outback for a huge amount of time, but how he got there is still up for debate. It was also noted that Ricky's car was never found. In 2010, Ricky released the book Left for Dead, How I Survived 71 Days in the Outback, which details his experience. I'd love to know what you think about this case because it is a crazy one, and how do you think he ended up there? Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel, I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc, and I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.